Hello everyone and welcome to Virtually There. I've said that a few times over the last year or so with a couple of false starts and unaired pilot and whatnot, but today, today I show you the true vision that I've had for this show. Now I'm going to go a little bit more into that later when I really should have actually been talking to my guests about them and not me, but the basic core of our show is a couple of people sitting down and talking about the things that make them passionate about their craft. There's also jokes. That's going to be a big part of it, too. Uh, unfortunately, speaking of jokes, uh, there were supposed to be some in this week's episode, uh, before the interview, actually. But time makes fools of us all, San Diego Comic-Con work. Uh, I'll make sure that we have some in for next time. Uh, guys, remember we need jokes for next week, all right? All right, uh, so I invite you all now to sit back and relax because this is virtually there and I personally can't wait to show you what we've been cooking up. Oh yeah, it was also Pokemon Go Community Day. My favorite water pup, Mudkip, was the focus and I really wish his evolutions were slightly better looking. Oh well, didn't stop me from catching a grand total of one shiny. Still waiting on the Sandshrew community today. I mean, he is the best Pokemon after all. Now, if only his shiny didn't look like hot garbage. Oh well. All jokes aside, I am super happy to finally move on to this next segment. Through all of our test episodes, this mannequin over here has sat on that couch just waiting for me to slap a face on it and post. And today is finally the day that I get to welcome a guest into my virtual studio. My guest today is a streamer, a YouTuber, and actor. He's appeared on Web of Lies, See No Evil, Defiance, and 12 Monkeys, and most recently ran a successful Kickstarter campaign for his new web series, Red Dragon. I present to you my friend and friend of the show, Brian Edwards. Brian. Hey. Thank you so much for coming on and being my uh -oh. first guinea pig guest. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, absolutely, man. It's always fun to have a friend on, and it's really kind of fun because I don't know if you noticed this, but it's kind of, it's a little lonely in here. <laughs> no, I like what you've done with the place. You know, it, it was really good once I figured out how to constitute myself in the virtual domain. It made it really simple to actually take care of the rest. <laughs> so, Well, I'm here for the ride, so let's... Uh... Let's get see where it. you go. All right. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, for people who don't know, uh, you are a bit of an actor. And one of the favorite things prior to becoming stuck in digital space was watching uh, shows like Web of Lies on Investigation Discovery with my wife. And every yep. now and then, Brian shows up. <laughs> so can I just uh, my, my infamous days yeah yeah exactly can I just like walk us through the process of like what it's like being on a, a TV show uh, well those shows uh, because they're very documentary focused we're reenacting so it's not necessarily the acting that you know and see on television mm -hmm. it's more you know they'll tell you the scene uh, person X murdered person A and then you just sort of go with you know, your gut. Right. Um, whereas, like, on a TV series, you know, you got lines, you got everything set up, and you pretty much have to do what they tell you, right? Yeah. Uh, up, up to an extent. And then a little bit of your creativity kicks in, right? Wait, so you're telling me that directors don't just let actors kind of go crazy and have fun on screen? Well, that, that all depends on the director, right? right. Uh, I mean, I've had some of the past who just tell me to do my thing, and then I've had people you know, want me to stay on, on book. Hmm. Uh, I think it all just depends on their process and, and what they're looking for. Oh, I guess I can understand that. Um, yeah. Now, this is one of those things that's always kind of been a question that I've had personally. Uh, mm -hmm. Are the craft services tables as good as we've all been led to believe? <laughs> yes and no. It depends on the budget of the, the project you're working on. Okay. I've had terrible food, and I've had some of the best food of my life. Um, without naming any names, uh, who has had the best craft services table? And no, I am not taking a note about it right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna na I'm gonna name names, uh, but I'll, I'll do it by the show because I don't want to bait these people out. Right. But, uh, 
Defiance. Defiance. Definitely the best route I've had so far. It's unfortunate, though, because that guy canceled, didn't it? Uh, it did. And uh, funny enough, the same season that I got on got canceled. Wow. Now, I'm not going to say trend. that it's causation here, but there's definitely a little bit of correlation. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there was a couple shows that I auditioned for just for a tiny role to see if I could sneak in, you know, before they end the show. And pretty much every time I've done that, it's been the last season. Huh. So I'm pretty sure I'm a, a bad luck charm. <laughs> well, at least with 12 Monkeys, as memory serves, you were on the first season. Yeah, first season, and then they swapped me out for a, a different witness to sort of keep the mystery. Because I think people started to think that I was going to be the villain when... In reality, I was a nobody just filling shoes, right? Yeah, if memory serves you, just wore a mask. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For the first season, I was just in a mask, uh, sauntered around, and uh, that was pretty much it. So Defiance 2, if memory serves, you played an alien. Yeah, an Irathian. They, they were like the quasi klingon -y ones, right? Um, yeah, they were kind of like a... Um... Like a cat people, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sort of had the same features and, and feralness of, of cats. Like, my audition for that was simply, you know, because my character dies. And uh, it was post-war. So they were, they had me tied up to a post and they were throwing darts in my chest. Hmm. You know, just messing with me because they won the war and they hated our, our kind, right? And um, my audition for that was just simply, the casting director said... Um, you know, you're tied up to a post and they're throwing darts at you. Act like you think uh, a cat species would act in that situation, right? Yeah. And then I just pulled a straight up Wolverine with the whole like snarling, sort of like ah, like vicious, you know, getting the getting the getting the muscles going and and doing all the panting and the, another, the growling and another famous Canadian. Yeah, that's right, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not talking Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. He's not. He's a, no. He's Australian. We uh, we don't call him Wolverine up here. It's just Hugh Jackman. He's like honorary Canadian. Well, then <laughs> who is the new Wolverine going to end up being? Like whoever that ends up being, are they going to be honorary Canadian? No, tr oh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're Canadian by default. Okay, cool. So Wolverine what I'm hearing role. is, yeah, is yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. I should go for this. So that way I can be honorary Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Wait, aren't you already? You came up here. Yeah, I, I mean, I would like to think I'm honorary Canadian. At least two of my tattoos are Canadian. Uh, yeah, that's right. There you go. Um, <laughs> oh, but yeah, so uh, it was kind of one of those, um, you know, vicious moments that I, I, in my head, that's how how I pictured it was just Hugh Jackman, like, thrashing, right? Yeah. And I had left the audition, and, you know, I felt good driving home, and I got about halfway home, and they already called my agent, and I got it oh, nice. before I even got, got to my house. So it was uh, it was good. You know, I, I, I'm going to come clean. I never watched Defiance. Uh, but I do <laughs> recall seeing the set pictures from when you were recording for it. And uh, if you had not told me this story, which you just shared, I totally would have thought that you died. Yeah. Because the, yeah. the picture was literally just you tied to a post with a bunch of darts <laughs> in your chest. And I was that, just like, that's all it was. That's all they showed. That was my scene. Just I was already tied up, and, and they threw some darts. And... Um, Grant Bowler, who played uh, Nolan, he came over and just stabbed me right in the neck and finished me off, and that was it. End of my scene. That's a, that's a pretty baller way to go, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was that was fun. I think that's my most memorable uh, experience so far. I mean, a, on that set, a, a mutual kind of internet acquaintance of ours, Elias Defexis, has had yeah. has gone worst ways. Has gone worst yeah, ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's known for his his deaths. Yeah, uh, he's known for his deaths or not asking for things. Yeah, yeah, definitely never asking for things. No, never did. Uh, fun yeah. story with him, though. Uh, one of his Canadian Lexus commercials accidentally aired in the U.S., and he was like, thanks for telling me. I need a little bit more money now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like... And that's exactly what it means. He probably wasn't kidding. Yeah, you know? no, exactly, because America's market is much bigger for Lexus commercials than Canada. Yeah. Because I imagine they don't do well in the frozen tundra. Uh, I don't know. Their all-wheel drive setup's pretty good. No, yeah, it's not. It's, it's, it's no Subaru, sir. No, it's no Subaru. That's for sure. Um, all right. So let me just. Boop. I have different questions to ask you, which are hidden yeah, no somewhere worries. else 
maybe behind you. Um, so w the main reason I asked you on the show, aside from the fact that you're my friend and it's really easy to get in touch with you and I knew you'd say yes either way, uh, <laughs> is that recently you ran a successful Kickstarter campaign uh, for a web series called Red Dragon. So yes. what is that? Uh, so the way we're describing it, because you know me, I'm not a huge fan of spoilers. So I have this thing where people release Kickstarters and they think they have to tell everyone everything, right? Right. Because that transparency for strangers obviously means a lot, right? So they, they get in panic mode and they're like, we have to tell them the whole idea from top to bottom. Otherwise, they're not going to fund us, especially if you're new and nobody knows you. Yeah. So I, I said, no, we're just going to lay down the general idea, tell them what we want to do with it, and then see where it goes. Right. Right. And of course, in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm we're screwed. There's no <laughs> way people are going to like believe that we even know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but we got lucky. You know, it's, it's we had a lot of people who have backed us in the past uh, come in. And and they threw their money around and it was crazy and, and the support was unreal. Nice. So so Red Dragon essentially is the way we're describing it is is almost like a visual storytelling experience. And we'll, in my we'll come head, back that, to that in a moment, but okay, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So um and then it's gonna take place in three parts. So it's it's it focuses on uh following a drug that is being bought, sold, uh, you know, used, uh, all the way up until like the consequences of that. And each character is going to be portrayed from start to finish of when this drug hits their hands and then leaves their hands okay, or goes into their body, sort of, so to speak. Um, and it's just, it's just like a, um, I, I don't know how to explain it without elaborating back on the, the visual part, but right. So, is this going to be like, say, the same story told uh, from three different perspectives, or it it's or just kind of like three uh, stories told around and through each other? Yeah, think of it like it's like a twenty four hour span of you know one drug getting passed and then the effects and consequences of it. So, for instance, I don't we haven't locked everything down completely, but for instance, Act One would be. The buying and selling right. uh act two would be the you know the next person getting it and doing it and the third part would be the consequences of that and how it affects everyone around them and and all this it kind of ties it all together at the end right so it's 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 the tale of one it's one story like one one situation told from three different perspectives like you know from the dealer to the user to the the family or friends or or whatnot right yeah huh so. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. Now, uh, you'd mentioned that kind of visual storytelling just a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I was all like, hey, don't elaborate yet. That's a future question. <laughs> so would you mind elaborating on this future question as to what you yes. mean by that visual storytelling? Uh, okay, so for me, you know, you watch, you watch some movies. Um, I use Nicholas Winding Refn as a reference for this one specifically because... His stuff is is insane. Is that when how you, you actually pronounce his, his middle name? Because I've always just been saying I, Winding. I think it's Winding. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. All anyway. I know is I've watched <laughs> one of his movies. The whatever the one with Mads Mikkelsen is the Viking. And oh right, yeah. yeah. It made like oh, yeah. it, it was a visually beautiful movie. Yeah. That I hated. Yeah, <laughs> his stuff is very. It's like Kojima, right? Like Hideo Kojima? That is the best and most accurate kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, equivalency. Like if I had to compare him. Yeah, that is the best comparison. Yeah, yeah. So he's like the filmmaker Kojima in my eyes, right? God, how Because does his he stuff get... is just so out there. Yeah, how does he still get money though? No. <laughs> I, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you grew up on on Metal Gear and all that stuff, so like, you know, you know those. I mean, you know, Kojima's legacy, right? I am aware of Metal Gear, and I may have played a couple of them, <laughs> but I would not say so, that I grew up on it. Well, I'm just saying, like, that's that's sort of like, um, his his work is sort of reminiscent of that, where it's so far out there, and it's it's so absurd and beautiful at the same time that like you don't know what to feel. 
like you get through it and you're like did i hate that or did i love it was right. it amazing or was it terrible like you, you never know you know immediately after a viewing yeah so so that's sort of like that that's sort of the reference that i that i use was that his work gives you these these uh uh emotions and and it's a it's such an odd experience but it's visually beautiful and you know we kind of want to uh use that as our inspiration for this we want people to feel this work rather than just watch it okay you know i don't want people just to see uh, a bunch of actors doing a a, a, a drug story right uh, about you know that life i want people to feel it yeah as they go through it i want them i mean I don't have any experience with it personally, but, you know, proximity has taught me some things and I want to sort of uh, portray it from my perspective while still giving the audience something tasty to look at. Right. From that Hollywood side, right? Um, but that's essentially what the visual storytelling thing is. It's, it's, it's like eye candy, but you're getting more than just eye candy. You're getting a feeling from it. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to get you sensing new things feeling new things you name it right well uh i guess the best thing i could say in that instance is uh good luck <laughs> because <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh that is definitely a lot more um uh grandiose and ambitious mm-hmm. uh, than i was expecting uh because I'll, uh, when I, i'll be honest when uh, your Kickstarter showed up on my Twitter feed. I was like, okay, cool. Brian's got a cool new idea. Maybe it's like a sequel to uh, The Burrow or one of mm, your previous yeah. other pieces, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. And you are describing something that is head and shoulders above anything you have attempted in the past. And and that's kind of like what we do, you know. Having done our YouTube stuff and and sort of moving forward i i didn't want to just do the same thing right because it's 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 almost expected to do like another division short or you know another sierra or something like that i wanted to do something that like we just people look at us and they're like who are these people like this is not what you do what are you doing like i wanted to go completely outside the box yeah um and i wanted to bring it up a couple notches because without challenge and without learning anything new What's the point? I'm just making YouTube videos at that point, right? No, so, there is nothing wrong with just making YouTube videos. No, no. <laughs> I mean, if that's if that's your thing, right? And then, but we're filmmakers at heart. So while we use YouTube as a, a platform, we still want to tell the stories in that traditional film sense. Yeah. Um, and then breaking it down into three parts just gives us a little bit more um, playroom, depending on where we're going to air it whether it's YouTube or a festival or something like yeah, it, it, it's all options right at that point. Yeah. Well, Hey, uh, I, I mean, Milwaukee has a decent film festival every year, so I'm just <laughs> saying, yeah, we got to see, we got to see if we, if it turns out any good, hopefully we do it justice, you know? Yeah. Uh, if I could cross these very fingers, ambitious. I would for yeah. you. <laughs> um, but well, I can, I can barely make fists. Yeah, close enough. One day, one day. <laughs> Um, one day <laughs> yeah you know like honestly because you know, the goal clearly uh with this is for mm-hmm. it to be more than just uh a single youtube show is to turn it into something kind of fun um you know I, I i touched on it earlier at the beginning of this episode which you weren't here for because you're actually i don't I, I, i'm gonna come clean with you audience brian's not actually here right now <laughs> he is back home in toronto or wherever he lives. That's right. I just assume everybody in Canada lives in Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal. Uh, so sorry, Edmonton and Calgary and Ottawa and Esther Hazy. Um, but is that, is that an actual place? It's an actual place. I know Esther a guy Hazy? from Esther Hazy. And I always make fun. It's, it's in Saskatchewan. And I always make fun of him. I say he's from Saskatoon. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real place. Um <laughs> And uh, so the, the goal with this show is, is to really just kind of have fun with all of this and like bring in friends, bring in other creators. Uh, I, I, I don't have it set in stone right now, but I have a really cool guest plan for next week. Um, but the goal is, you know, to bring this kind of late night feel 
to the space, which we kind of do and don't have, you know. Mm. And then and in a new way. Yeah, right? and to do like it in doing. something that is uniquely my own way, because it's, uh, you know, not to take the the spotlight away from Brian. Spoiler alert: There's no spotlight on Brian. Um, <laughs> is that the idea is that with behind the show was to leverage uh, my various talents. There's at least a few of them, trust me, I promise, I swear, um, in a way that only I could leverage them. You know, it's like I'm using a game engine and virtual reality to build the talk show that I always wanted as a kid. You know, yeah. I mean, I didn't necessarily always want like this cell shaded virtual space kind of talk show. But like, I, you know, as a kid, we all thought we were really cool and had stuff to talk yeah. to people about. My thing was, is I like talking to people with cool stuff to talk about. So why not make something for me to have the opportunity to talk to them? Yeah, right. You know, like. It's that, and that's pretty much, you, you're hitting the head on the, the nail on the head. Like, it's identical to what we're going through, right? You start from yeah. something small and you build it into what you want and. It's all a process, right? Yeah, and one of the, the most important thing was I had to have a coffee cup. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you it, can't do anything without well, a coffee Well, absolutely cup. not. I mean, it's just like you have one <laughs> over there, but unfortunately your mannequin can't reach for it. Yeah, I can't. Sorry. Like, does this work if I go? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it's working from here, but the fun thing is, yeah. is that I can take like this notepad and I can throw it at you. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> and nothing happens. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, well, well, now you're down one notepad. Way to go. Yeah, I, it's all the way over there. I, I'm not getting it for you. <laughs> Damn it, Brian. What I'm, good I'm are stuck you? here. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, all right. So um, before this, I, I previously had a very short-lived podcast that recorded precisely two episodes. Um, and I ended every interview, and this is something I want to bring back, with five okay random ass questions oh okay uh and so the goal here is for me to ask you these questions which are going to uh really tell the people who you are but oh, not giving wow. you any time to really answer them oh geez it's hot it's hot in here i know right <laughs> okay so number one and just answer it's these. not a timer right oh it's i not... don't have a timer but i might for later shows thank you for that oh idea. uh oh Future Sorry, guests. Everyone else. <laughs> you have Brian to thank. Ah, oh, jeez. So, first question: Star Wars okay. or Star Trek? Uh, Star Wars. Millennium Falcon, Rossinante. Oh, Rossinante. Ooh, that's a good answer. He got the right answer yeah. on that one. All right. Yeah, the other one's way too obvious. Uh, Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? Ooh. Die Hard. Mm, that's a good answer too. I had to think about that because they're both amazing. They like, I, really are both yeah. amazing. Um, that's a hard one. Why would you give me that? Because it's a hard question. That's like asking me to pick the best child. Also, the great thing about it is that they're both Christmas movies. Ooh, yeah. And they're both correct answers, too. They, like oh, no, they absolutely answer. are. They yeah. absolutely are. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, my yeah. personal answer on that one is Lethal Weapon, if only because pre-crazy Mel Gibson with Danny Glover Ooh, yeah, is yeah, just yeah, absolutely yeah. amazing. All right, so that, yeah. was, that was three, right? <laughs> I like yeah, I like that one, but I hate it at the same yeah. time. Are you Damn secretly you. American? Uh, maybe. Are you more American than me? Oh no, absolutely not. Okay, that's funny because you definitely are more American <laughs> than me. Like, do I don't know, man. I, I'm pretty sure I've said sorry a few times. You've so said far. sorry a few times, but you posted more pictures of you on American flag backdrops than I've probably ever that, seen American flags. That that's true. I I like to keep my self. Uh, what's the, what's the term? Um, not neutral. What's what ambiguous? I, yeah, I yeah. So you're trying to maintain some uh, some ambiguity to your your national yeah. identity. Yeah, yeah. Because I, you know, sometimes I go to auditions where I have to play an American guy. I don't want to sound like, hey, how's it going, eh? You know. I just stopped I, off at the I, Tim honestly, Hortons for some do. coffee there. Sorry, I may have spilled a little on the carpet out front. <laughs> Sorry, like I can't even fake being Canadian. As a joke. <laughs> well, I mean, you do a pretty good job, man. But, I mean, you know, The I'm, flappy head thing? I you know, know, I'd like to think that I'm pretty good at pretending to be Canadian. Um, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us are secretly Canadian. A lot of us are secretly American. I'm definitely secretly American. <laughs> I think it's values more than 
uh, then I'm definitely accent. secretly Canadian. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think being American or Canadian is like a state of mind. Okay. So like California? Oh, you uh, you probably don't have the stupid California commercials up there, do you? No, probably not. Yeah, we have these like stupid California tourism commercials where they get a bunch of actors and whatnot to go around and be like, "Hey, look at us! We're surfing. We're like totally like every other state." And I'm like, "No, <laughs> I'm like, we, I don't have surfing up here. I, it, I don't. We do. Is in, there surfing in like New York? Uh, I don't know about New York, but there's surfing in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. they surf wow. Lake Michigan." I want to see these commercials now. Well, I mean, they don't put it on the commercials because nobody would believe it. They'd be like, oh, that's made yeah. up. But I saw it. Nobody actually surfs here. <laughs> what the heck is surfing? That water's too cold. It's either ice or not ice. It's probably just tourists, right? Yeah, probably. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, as I looked down at my little on-screen timer here, uh, we've been going for a while now. Oh, oh. Uh, which is going to be fun for me because now I'm going to have to figure out how to cut this all in post into a, a brief interview for the main episode and then the whole thing for just the interview. Yeah, uh, that is up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everybody watching at home, if you're watching us on the main show, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed my interview with Brian, I will be posting within the next day or two after this episode a complete interview of or the complete and total uncut version of the interview but thankfully brian and myself were adults and watched our language um <laughs> which i'm really surprised which on i my am ass. too i'm so surprised yeah. <laughs> but like so, yeah um i do want to keep the show kind of clean because kids watch this stuff but then like dude you ever think like in 20 30 years what's going to be like like the, our swear words are going to be you know just like the common slang that everybody throws out and then they're going to have all new swear words oh yeah like we're you know the s word is like archaic yeah and then we're going to be there and they're going to like say something we're going to be like we are offended yeah <laughs> we are officially old we are officially old uh <laughs> one day one day um i it's okay i feel like that now with some of the stuff that's out there <laughs> And I'm only like I'm only 35. And, uh, you know, I'm slightly you know. older than you, and I'm but I'm staying young by, by helping create meme culture with this show. Yeah, there you go. So uh, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna be. You, you just next time you come down here, you're gonna see me like dressed up like Steve Buscemi with a, with a skateboard over my shoulder, just being like, "What's up, fellow yeah. kids?" Yeah, yeah. That's that's lit, fam. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> AF. Uh, let's let's never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> or let's only do it. Um, oh, my goodness. But thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, this is Brian. My Edwards. pleasure. Brian, tell everybody where they can find you. I, with that said, though, if you, you don't catch it or you've already stopped watching, I'll put links below. <laughs> you can uh, catch me on Twitter, I guess would be the best, at Bad Idea Bry. One word. Yep. Because I think you can only have one word. You can always throw underscores in there and stuff like no, that. No, no, that's that's too cliche. You know what? When I have a guest on who has an underscore Tell them. in their Twitter, I'm going to have them get in touch with you. <laughs> Just take it up with me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Brian, again, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody out there thank you. Uh, who's been watching, big hand of applause for Brian. Hi. Yeah, come on, audience. Like, get your stuff together. <laughs> I caught myself there. I caught myself. So, but thank you guys very much for watching and joining us here on Virtually There. I will be back next week with new jokes, new news, new guest. Um, although, who knows? Maybe I'll just throw, like, Brian as, like, my Andy Richter on the other side of the couch. But if you enjoyed the show, like, subscribe, hit that bell uh, icon thing. And, you know, leave us a comment down in the uh, section below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time virtually there.